What's going on guys and welcome to today's video. Today I am speaking with Mr. Robbie Riss. He is the voice of Michelangelo from the original three Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies from the 90s. He also played Cousin Oliver in the Brady Bunch. He also has a lot to do with the film Sharknado and his resume goes on and on and on and on. It was a pleasure getting to interview Robbie and getting to know uh, all about him, his past work, and uh, he was a cool guy. I will let you know that I'm going to put a little parental advisory over this video. There's some language in here, so if you got sensitive ears or little ones, now you know. So, Robbie, take it away. All right, we are live. Today we have special guest, Mr. Robbie Rist. Hello. <laughs> Robbie, thanks for... Uh, joining and uh taking some time out to uh chat with us and yeah. the viewers about uh yourself and a little turtle talk celebration Ooh. talk shark sure. nature, sharks yeah yeah right. all of it bring all it on whatever stuff. look at look at my imdb <laughs> that resume goes on forever we could just do the 80s and be here all day <laughs> kid video man kid video. right see <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah uh we're gonna get started so uh robbie for those that might not know too much about your uh your career can you uh fill us in on that touch on that how did you get started where did it all Man, I, I bitched my parents into it uh <laughs> I basically i wanted to be a performer and my parents weren't in entertainment at all, and uh, I said, I want to be in a movie, and they took me on an audition thinking, it was like a major cattle call, you know, 300 kids, one of those things, and I'm dutifully sitting in my seat, an hour and a half has gone by, and my mom looks over at me, and my dad, and they're like, so, uh, whew, been an hour and a half, probably want to go home, huh? <laughs> and I, I looked at both of them, and I went, no. <laughs> and uh, and then I got the job, and then I got the next six in a row, and uh, the die was cast, and uh, you know my parents hated my career, and uh, here we are. It's great. Here we are. And uh, that first role was at uh, was at the Brady Bunch for. So no, 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 the no, Brady Bunch right before that. Brady, Brady Bunch is two and a half years oh, in. Wow. Yeah. Two so years. like it was just a student film. Okay, but uh, but I just you know I like I said I uh, for the first six I just kept getting them, and then when seven came around and I didn't get it, I, all that made me do is go, <laughs> "What do you mean you don't get everyone? <laughs> yes, you do." <laughs> and then I proceeded to kick some more ass, and then yep. uh, and uh, yet so far away from the guy I am now. The guy I am now is sort of like. Yeah, all right, maybe not. Yeah, maybe I'm kind of done. You know, back then I was like, no, we go and we do it. Over the hill. Come on, boys. So, uh, so yeah, I was really, uh, I was really motivated. And, uh, and yeah, worked all the time. And then uh, not getting jobs would only make me want to do more jobs. And then I, uh, yeah, here we are. I'm, you know, I started when I was seven. Yeah. So wow. I'm, I'm 59. You know, they haven't kicked me out yet. They keep trying, but you know. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm still, still here. here. <laughs> still a thorn in the side of the industry. <laughs> oh, so what, uh, I guess fast forward a little bit to kid video. So previously. Thought, by the way, by the way, Craig. Yeah. That's a hell of a fast forward. That's a fastball? That's a that's hell a of a fast forward. Oh, fast forward, yeah. Yeah, it's a hell of a fast forward because I was seven and now I'm 21. You're 20. A whole bunch of things happened. 21? Holy yeah. moly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so after the the seventh, right, the one that you, you did not you, you did not land, at that point where you – uh, oh, by the way, I'm joking. We can go right to kid video. I don't care. Well, no, 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 no. So I'm, 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 not, I'm not going to. I'm not going to tell you how to run your show. No, no. I, you, I am here to answer questions. You just go, Bob. <laughs> stick with the program. Stay with what I'm saying, please. Well, I was. Yeah, I'm trying Pay to get a little attention. 
I, I'm trying to get my answer out of you by doing it this way. So, oh, you uh, want a particular answer? If you want a particular answer, <laughs> ask me a particular question. When Don't beat you... around the bush. Don't you know? No sleight of hand. Nothing in this hand. Look at this hand. No. Uh, what do you want to know? When when did you start playing music? Uh when way before acting. I was way three. before that. Yeah, I was. Uh, I my started banging on piano in the house and my parents were like well we have a choice we can uh, teach him how to do it mm -hmm. or every morning he's going to do this yeah so uh so they they you know so i started learning about music and then uh, uh actually and then well actually started with violin i mean i was banging on the piano but they said hey here's a violin it's quieter and uh and then uh, uh my hands are too small i guess for three and then piano followed after that, and then it was everything else. That's amazing! Holy crap! How many instruments can yeah. you play? I just—I mean, I just—it's I, a weird thing. Some people know what they want to do. Uh, you know, okay, I—I I, I didn't know what I wanted to do right out of the gate because really, when I was about three or four, I wanted to be a fireman on the moon. So, like, I mean, that's cool. Know. Yeah, but it, definitely not. Like it wasn't really a vision, you know what yeah. I mean? But yeah. yeah, at a certain point, I just started performing. I mean, I was you know mm -hmm. putting on plays for the dog, you know, it's like crap like mm -hmm. that. So uh, it, it looked like that's what I was gonna do. And mm -hmm. Much to, again, much to my parents' chagrin, you know, I I, I literally got this talk. Uh, your father and I want you to be happy in whatever you choose to do in your life. But personally, we think you, you'd be happiest if you became a CPA. Okay. Yes, yeah. Say it. Say and it I, went, it. I, I went, noted. <laughs> noted. That was about it. Noted. Um, noted. That's crazy, man. CPA. Right. I mean, it's, yeah, it's safe, I guess. Sure. Uh, I mean, no, I, I, look, I, they're, I, they're European immigrants and, 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 and they're World War II babies. And mm. they look, stability was key. Mm -hmm. where me growing up with all of this stability, yeah. uh, I was like, well, the hell with that. I have no interest in it whatsoever, which has, of course, been a mixed bag. You know, I mean, yeah. you know, choosing choosing art is definitely a, it's a it's a it's a uh, an industry and 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 a, a life path where be prepared to more than once in your life look at yourself in the mirror and go, remember, this is what you asked for. You know, yeah. Ask, ask John Lennon. Yeah. 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 We'll try. We'll you try wanted that. to be, you wanted to be known by millions. Well, no, you got it. not always, uh, you know, it doesn't always go the way you think it's going to. Right. 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 <laughs> With you being, being busy. As a kid, going on all these auditions, playing all these instruments, did you did you ever like collect or have any a favorite toy that you? Oh well, I, I mean, I was an avid model builder when I was a kid, and okay. uh, and uh, I was uh, uh, something of a Jerry and Sylvia Anderson nut. So you know, I was uh, I was a Space nineteen ninety nine UFO. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, those shows were, uh, were, were big for me more so than I would say Star Trek or, or, uh, you know, anything more American. I, I you know, mm -hmm. I thought, uh, space 1999 was way edgier, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, and, and also really, let's face it, ship design way better. Yeah. I'm just, you know, sorry, yeah. Trek fans. Sorry. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the, 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 the enterprise is nice. Yeah. Not not offensive in any way, mm -hmm. but I'm sorry. The Eagle is a way more exciting piece of uh, piece of gear. Yeah. Did you, uh, did you, were you into, uh, did you watch a uh, battle, battle star Galactica? And were you uh, Craig, 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 I want you right now. Mm -hmm. to, are you in front of your computer? I am. Okay. Go, go to my IMDB page. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Robbie wrist at IMDB. That's how you find it. You know, you're 12. You know, you grew up with computers. I, like, I, mean, I am DB too. You're a, you're like 11 years old and you all had computers in your hands from the time that you were like babies. Oh, 
Now, at, on my IMDb page, mm -hmm. I want you to look up Galactica 1980. Oh, there we go. There we go. I mean, I mean dude, you have, you have, I mean. Before you do one of these interview things, do you do any research? <laughs> I do, uh, but you have like 156. That's only the known stuff. That's only the known stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's not the that's not the adult film. It's years. insane, man. Like, oh, you yeah. do it. Work, 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 work. Like yeah, yeah, day. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, what? That was another thing about German immigrant parents is I that I like once I started working, they went. Mm -hmm. Now we are German, and you understand that we have started working. Now you will not stop working until you die. <laughs> and that was just the way. Between that. And the other thing they said, which was, uh, again, it always seemed to be prefaced with them going, you know, we're German immigrants. And I go, oh, um, I, I, they said, yeah, oh, we're German immigrants. So we just want you to know in this entertainment thing, if you do anything that we deem uh, uh, unsavory or something we don't like, uh, we will not only yank you out of this industry so quickly, you won't know what happened. And we will then murder you and make another one that looks exactly like you. And no one will miss you at all. And the only people that will know is your father and I. So, you know, watch your ass, kid. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, Robbie. Man. Yeah, dude. I mean, look at your INDB. I mean, it's. it's. Uh, I've it's done not, a lot of stuff. Yeah. But you, you just said Galactica. I'm like, come on. I was, yeah, in, the, like, I was on. in the shitty one. I mean, I mean, of course, I looked at it before our interview quite a bit, but I, I was, was like, in the crappy he's, Galactica. He's been in a crap ton of stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, I mean that's uh, somehow somehow I managed to turn it into a job. Yeah, you know, I mean, dude, over, I mean, you know, I mean, uh, uh, it's crazy. Like I said, they haven't kicked me out yet. Yeah, very few people can maintain that. Um, I'm no, I'm so so lucky. And incredibly grateful. I mean, uh, I, I, who knew? And I know people. I know people that I grew up with uh, in entertainment mm -hmm. who don't do it anymore. Yeah. They're just out. That's it, mm -hmm. right? And not because they don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. They just kind of stopped working. Mm -hmm. And I, I somehow, I don't know, whatever it is. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think it's necessary. I mean, some of it's ability, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't believe, I, I think there's a tremendous amount of luck that goes into it. And I, I, I feel as though that sort of, that my career, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's, uh, you know, I, I've been pretty damn lucky. Yeah. You know? Pretty awesome. That's, awesome. That, that's mm -hmm. great, dude, for sure. What was your... How did you get into uh, doing voiceovers? Like, what was your first gig? And I, uh, I was with an agency that had a theatrical department, a print department, a mm. voiceover department, and uh, and a kids department. And at the time, I was seventeen or eighteen when I joined up. And uh, whenever they needed young voices, they would cast you know out of the 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 kids department mm -hmm. and I just started picking these jobs up and they started being the jobs I was doing more than any on camera stuff. And, you know, I'll be honest with you at that time, again, I was probably like 18 or 19, something like that. 17, 18, 19. Uh, I, you know, I was getting a little burnt on getting up at four thirty in the morning and was sitting in traffic and, yeah. you know, a voiceover ordinarily. I mean, I, it's, everything's different now, but uh, mm -hmm. back then, uh, most jobs started at 10 a.m. And if it was a commercial, you were out by 11, 1130. Uh, if it was a animation, you were there for four hours and then the rest of the day, and then the rest of the day was yours. And wow. so I found myself going, I, I think I'm going to put my energy toward this. Yeah. And, uh, and I did a bunch of that. And then, uh, you know, I, I, I still do. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I'm, uh, I was on Doc McStuffins for five years. Yeah. The, the uh, dragon, right? Stuffy. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, and I mean that you know I'm like for the last. I mean I'm still doing jobs, mm-hmm. but but that's a big Disney. You know I mean that's yeah. a big job. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, yeah and and uh, for uh, for you know one of the big jobs I did, I'm really mm-hmm. proud of that one because uh, you know it exists to alleviate children's fear. I mean it's there to sell toys also of course it's a cartoon you know and it's a disney cartoon right? yeah. yeah it's all about making money but also the creator chris me was really about kids uh you know her son was asthmatic mm-hmm. and so she spent the first three or four years of his life in hospitals with him mm. and uh, and uh, it uh, the whole show is about not being afraid of the doctor or you know mm-hmm. um, Every, these are the people who are trying to help, and the ones who aren't, keep an eye out for them. And right. I don't know. I, I'm really, I'm super proud of it. I mean, those characters are on the are painted on the hallways of children's hospitals. Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know, it's 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 amazing and heartbreaking all at once. Yeah, that's yeah, the, yeah that's a definitely a, a huge um, property to be involved with, and especially yeah. the character that you did the voiceover for. Uh, my daughter was. A huge, huge dog fan. So we've watched mm-hmm. many, many of episodes with her. Yeah. So. And also, I'm, you know, there's a, the crazy thing about being involved with a kid show is, uh, uh, you know, there's a continuum that uh, because it's for little kids and little kids don't necessarily have any nostalgia, they can reach back mm-hmm. to old games. Like Monopoly, you know what I mean? Monopoly has Beverly Hills, Monopoly, and blah, blah, blah. There's a Doc McStuffins operation game. And I'm like, you know, and there's a Doc McStuffins couple of golden books. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, uh, you know, that's uh, that's being a part of history also. Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, just all all the toy merch went along with it. I'm pretty sure sure my daughter had the Doc McStuffins, like, um, Toy box, like the little baskets with a hang, like, dude, she had, yeah, she had, oh, yeah. oh man, there's so much that came out with that. Talking about, uh, you know, voice acting and all of that, how did you land the role of uh, Mikey for the uh, Team and Team movies? I mean, it was, uh, you know, audition process, mm-hmm. you know, uh, 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 so I had a musician friend. Mm-hmm. Uh, who uh, was a big comic book guy. And this is 1988, Bob Coleman. And Bob uh, showed me the black and white on small paper comic. It was like yeah. from the first year the first, or something. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and he thought it was, what were you going to say? I said very limited. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so he said, yeah, this is pretty ridiculous, isn't it? And I flipped through it, and I'm like, whoa, violent, how fun, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then I, you know, promptly forgot about it. And then about, uh, whatever, three years later or whatever, they, uh, two years later, th- I get a call to audition for it. And they're like, you know what the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are? They're going to make a movie out of it. And I went, for kids? Kind of violent and dark, isn't it? They're like, oh, no, dumbass. It was a cartoon in between. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. So that's <laughs> kind, of where they, kind of where they shaved off all the edges, you know? Yeah. And uh, and then, uh, so I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And it's a live action thing. I was like, well, that's interesting. And I had done ADR before. Mm-hmm. And automatic dialogue replacement. And uh, yeah, so, and basically, I mean, I, uh, you know, I, I this isn't an ego thing, mm-hmm. but I, I, I frequently get when people go to cons and stuff like that. And we talk about the show. Oh yeah. Uh, th- there is a, you know, uh, frequently people say, you know, um, the version I did is their favorite. Um, and, you know, and though, and I'm in some pretty fast company there. I mean, mm-hmm. I, you know, when you think about that character, uh, there's Townsend Coleman who is, He's the tick for fuck's sake. Yeah, he's he's one of the he's one of the most successful voiceover people, successful actors mm-hmm. ever. 
And, uh, and, uh, you know, I, really, what about him? You know, I, yeah. and then, you know, then there's Mikey Kelly, who is a really great voiceover artist. There's that Canadian dude that's been doing the one cartoon for like 15 years oh, or something. Yeah. I who I've yet to meet. I'm very curious about him, and uh, and then there's the uh, you know, the, the Michael Page. and then there's the uh, you know, then there's the new the new crowd. So whenever people talk about these things, I go, well, of course I'm better than the Michael Bay cast. Those <laughs> things suck, but but Townsend Coleman, you know, Greg Sipes. Mm-hmm. You know, these are, uh, the uh, you know, I mean, the wildly successful, very talented actors. Yeah. So it's very flattering whenever people tell me that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, you know, and uh, and so, uh, but I had no idea what I was getting into either. Mm-hmm. At the time, you know, I, I did this show in the 70s called The Brady Bunch. And, and like, when, when it went off the air, it was a popular show. Mm-hmm. But when it went into syndication it became the thing that everyone talks about. Well, that community talks mm-hmm. about now. Right. Yeah. And, and this is a very similar thing that at the time, the turtles cartoon with Townsend and, and, uh, and uh, Rob Paulson and all that, mm-hmm. uh, th- that was, you know, it was successful, but it, it, it wasn't like, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, they, uh, Seth Rogen just made another yeah. turtle movie. Mm-hmm. And the first one, well, wait, the cartoon comes out in 89. So that's 89, now it's 10 years. 99 to 2009 is, uh, yeah, that's uh, 20 years. Mm-hmm. So this thing's 30-something years old. Yeah. And it's still being refiltered and, 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 and you know, brought back from the dead over and over and over again. So there must be something to it that is, I don't know. I mean, think of, no one talks about shark boy and lava girl. And that my, was a, my kids do actually, yeah. but does it have, <laughs> no, no, I get it. But I mean, does, yeah. do, it doesn't have the sort of cultural. Oh no, no, that it does turtle things. Do. No, and no, it's no, crazy. No. To yeah. Me. I mean, you know, so I, I had no idea what I was getting into. So I was yeah. basically just doing an impression of Kurt Yaney, who was a guy I went to 10th grade with. And, uh, and that was it. You know? yeah. I mean, Val speak, you know, surf speak comes from my graduating class. Mm-hmm. We were doing that accent for years before Valley Girl came out, before the Zappa tune. And I think yeah. that's, that's kind of what set it off into the stratosphere. But I'm from the San Fernando Valley. We were making fun of surfers for a long time, <laughs> you know, before. Yeah. There was a, this dude, Kurt Yaney used to like, he went to viewpoint school with me and he would get up every morning, like in the winter, in the winter. He'd get up every morning at like three 30 and he'd put his wetsuit on and he'd go down to the beach and he'd plant his board in the sand and he would sit there for about 40 minutes and he'd watch the waves very meditational Mm -hmm. and then he'd uh, go and surf for a bit Mm -hmm. and then he'd show up at school sand still in his hair you know he's wearing flip-flops and whatever and i'm like kurt what's up he's like hey dude what's up i'm like right on okay (laughs) so so it's good to know so kurt if you're out there you know you kind of gave me a new lease on life i really appreciate it kurt that's awesome, dude. That's very cool. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. I mean, for me, like I was, I was nine years old when uh, the first Team and Team movie came out, and that was my. You're, the, right? you're between, was, yeah, between right between f- six and nine, maybe six and ten. Mm-hmm. If you see that movie for the first time, oh, dude. it's it's transformational. I've yeah. seen it more than yeah. once. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I remember like sitting in the in the theater, like waiting for it to come on. And, I'm, and even as a as a child, I was like, I hope this doesn't suck <laughs> because I love the freaking turtles. So even at nine, that was it. What was in my head and what I saw, I was not expecting because it was it was so well done, man. I mean, just everything about it. Like one it, is one's a real movie. Mm-hmm. One yeah. is a real movie. Uh, yeah. The other ones are all trying to chase the dragon. You know, they're right. all trying to sort of do a lot of fan service and make sure that uh, you know the parent groups aren't getting all up in arms over 
you know, the fact that Junior has destroyed mm-hmm. the rocking chair that her great grandmother, <laughs> you know, brought right. into the family and, you know, all that stuff. So I've had to apologize to some people at cons for destroyed furniture. <laughs> You're like, thanks a lot, Mikey. Thanks. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah. that first one, dude. I mean, the, I mean, there's there's nothing like it, and I mean, that is no, it's it's like I, I say all the time, okay. it's it isn't it isn't like Star Wars. Mm-hmm. It's a different thing, mm-hmm. but it's like Star Wars in that I talk to a lot of guys in their 30s and younger, you know, in their 20s. Mm-hmm. The guys in their 20s are like, I just had my kid. And it is everything in me to not show him right now. Right. He's, he's eight months old. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, but they can't wait until they're six or seven, five, so they can just go, all right, we're going to sit down and we're going to watch this together. And I think there's something really beautiful about, uh, you know, it's been used as an electric babysitter a lot, yeah. but also, you know, I, I in in con world, in convention mm-hmm. world, um, I, I look at this whole environment as having nothing to do with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm yes, in that uh, the people want to talk to me, mm-hmm. but truthfully, these things are about the person who's paid their twenty dollars for them to be the performer. Because mm-hmm. everyone who comes to my table has a story that they've wanted to tell. Yeah. And uh, so many of the turtle stories are like, you know, uh, my dad worked a lot, but, you know, he f- like we sat down and watched this together like all the time. And mm-hmm. it was this big bonding thing. Uh, I hear that a lot having to do with this movie. And uh, it's another thing to be really, I mean, I'm kind of awed by it. You know, that, that, I don't know. Robbie Rist helping bringing families together. I mean, it's weird. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, I I can't imagine like hearing those stories and how much joy that, that brings to yourself because maybe at the time you're like, I don't know what the hell this is, you know, what, this is going to do, but here it is, like you said, 30 years yeah. later. And you're well, I mean, it's, this, and it's, it's like, a weird thing about these uh, things that are lightning in a bottle. Mm-hmm. Again, again, yes, there are people talking about Shark Boy and Lava Girl, <laughs> but not as much as they are about the turtle. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Think about how much kids entertainment has come out in the ensuing 30 something years. Yeah, a lot. And, and 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 no one's talking about that stuff. And mm-hmm. for some stupid reason that I am yet to ascertain, it seems like in every decade I've managed to s- fall backwards into something that we're still talking about. Yeah, that, that, <sighs> it's incredible, man. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I mean, good job. I mean, <laughs> right. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I'm happy for you. I mean, like you yeah. were my Michelangelo, like growing up. So that's really cool, you know. Uh, um, yeah, thank you. Not only did you do the the three, uh, all three movies, right, for Mikey, um, but you also um, you were Mondo Gecko in the 2012 series. In the 2012, yeah. Uh, you did a, a Casey Jones like short, correct? That was filmed in like Austin and Dallas area. Oh yeah, the 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 Casey Jones fan movie. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah, see. I I did that instead of the uh, turtle movies, instead instead of the the Michael Bay ones. I, I avoided that at all, yeah. at all cost. I was like, you know what? I think the fan film is mm-hmm. probably going to be more true to the mm-hmm. material than anything that guy's going to put out. So, yeah. uh, and I know I sound like I'm bagging on it. <laughs> It's because I am. Yeah, it's I am. I mean, <laughs> truth be told, I mean that's fine, dude. Um, I want to sit down with Mike and go. All right, let's talk about you. I mean, look at this way. What does he have to lose? These movies made him billions. Yeah. Well, the Transformers movies did, which is the same deal. Where you know the main, the reason, the naming, the thing that the movie is named after mm-hmm. is a second-class citizen in its own movie. Yeah, yeah. that blows my mind. 
That's fair. Uh, did you did you uh, did you have a chance? Did they talk to you the, the, uh, for the Bay films? Was that after a, after uh, after, uh, after when I said that Michael Bay is raping our childhoods? I I got the sense that I probably wasn't okay. going to be working for the guy very much. Right. Okay. Uh, and, you know, and I chose very strong words, kind <laughs> of on purpose, just to be scandalous. But oh, uh, you know, uh, the uh, uh, TMZ mm -hmm. did a. Did, it's still up online. You can find it. It's hilarious, and uh, it's basically just about me going. Seriously, dude, you're gonna make him alien? What? What? Yeah. I think because of that, uh, you know, uh, I, I yeah, I don't I don't see me. Uh, Kind of rocking some mic yeah. projects anytime soon. Probably, probably not, not in that case, man. But that's awesome. Oh I mean, you're God, like, you go to rock your chest. I'm and... still glad my career is over. What? <laughs> I said, you know, it's good that you got it out there, man. You're like, hey, you're just saying yeah, yeah. what you feel. And a lot of people don't do that. That's in the, in the industry, I'm sure. Like, I'm well, sure. because, because, like, I, you know, I, I don't, I should, but I don't. Right. Care, uh, care about making money. Yeah, but I respect. I don't. That I, I I don't care if if I never get hired by this particular person. It's yeah. like whatever. I I'll, I work. I have I have stuff. I'm fine. I did all right. I'm mm -hmm. not. You know. I'm not a billionaire or anything. But I mean, you know. I I think I'll be able to live out my life. I think the last penny will probably go out the door when the little machine shuts off. So that'll be good. It'll mm -hmm. be like. And that'll be it. See you later, Rob. Yeah, you come in with nothing, you leave with nothing. You yeah. leave with nothing. Yeah, I did. Yeah, what do you? What do you got? <laughs> nothing. Oh, Always man. look on the bright. Okay, yeah. You play. You still play uh, music, right? Like I saw oh, on your Instagram that. Um, what, what's the name of your group? Well, I, uh, I, I let's see. Currently. I go by the, I, I, because I got sicko, I don't like using my name. Right. It's, it's just sort of, so yeah. anything having to do with me and whoever I play with is just called Ballsy Tomorrow. From, okay. Okay. From here on out. And, uh, and then, yeah, I mean, I do a bunch of that. I got a, you know, a band camp page and, you know, there's stuff available on there. And oh. I also uh, just, uh, we remixed. I've been doing all the songs for the Sharknado movies. So yeah. I got songs mm -hmm. in all, all mm -hmm. six of them. And we just remixed and remastered. The movie is uh, actually being released in the next couple of days in theaters oh, okay. uh, with, a, with, a new, uh, with a new music soundtrack. And, nice. uh, and they've done some re-editing and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. uh, so that's me and the director, Anthony C. Ferrante. We, uh, we, mm -hmm. he kind of, he, because, you know, he's a low budget film director and he mm -hmm. wants to have Aerosmith songs in his movies. Yeah. He doesn't have the money for Aerosmith yeah, songs. Yeah. So he comes to me and goes, without getting sued, <laughs> can we make a song that sounds a little bit like Aerosmith? And then I make a song that's a little bit like Aerosmith. And he goes, I said, I don't want to get sued. Like, <laughs> don't worry about it. It's fine. No one gets sued. No that's, one cares. Yeah. Rock music. Rock music is over. So like yeah. no one's looking. No one's looking under the. Uh, no one's looking under the rock for you know potential money. No. <laughs> it's yeah. Rock. I, I agree. Rock is dead, man. No, of course music is. Yeah. I, I mean, there's good stuff being made. Yeah. There's a ton of good music being made, but I just don't think it has the the cultural weight it once did because you know mm -hmm. there's there's too many there's too many things mm -hmm. to distract you yeah. so you know that listening to bands was so much easier you know before internet porn was everywhere <laughs> true yeah well, I think all, I think all. well i i i guess we could we could use the term internet porn as a catch all for yeah. whatever it is that you're looking for. Exactly. You know, there's oh, yeah. a period in there. I just got out of a phase of watching dog grooming videos. You know what I mean? Like there were no dog grooming videos to watch. So I yeah. go, I'm going to throw on that queen record again. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, so I, I think uh, music isn't, uh, it's sad too, because music is the best. Music is my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, as usual, uh, I say this all the time, uh, you know, I feel as though 
I keep catching the tail end of everything good. Mm -hmm. You know, so and, like I was like just getting into bands just in time for the industry to start breaking up. Yeah. You know, uh, movies. I, I made a, you know, I made a little independent movie just around the time it became really hard to get independent movies distributed. Oh. Yep. You know, it's like, so I keep like doing the art, but it keeps, you know, I'm like, maybe after I die, there'll be people that go back and go, oh my God, that wasn't horrible at all. Yeah, that was, that wasn't bad. Yeah. Wasn't bad. <laughs> nice job, buddy. Good job. What's the, what's the name of the uh, independent movie that you uh, put out? It's called Stump the Band. Stump. You can, uh, if you want a copy of it, you can get it at stumpthebandcom Okay. Uh, it's uh, a horror comedy about a, a female rock band that uh, gets attacked by three guys who collect women's feet. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I have to watch this now. I have to watch. Yeah, it. I, I think you do. Um, I think you do. So yeah, it's got uh, you know, it's got some like you know the the. The one of the women in the thing was the bass player in the band in Howard the Duck. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, uh, one of the girls is in Jarhead. Jarhead. Okay. Uh, one, uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. No, we got some talent in there, and yeah. uh, 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 there's some funny songs. And oh, Danny Cooksey from uh, Different Strokes. Oh, Different Strokes. Okay. okay. Yeah, the red-haired kid that they the cousin Oliver of Different Strokes. Yeah, there you go. Last season. Yeah. yeah, so he he's in there too. And uh uh yeah, and it, I think it's pretty funny. It's pretty silly. I mean, it's not going to reinvent the wheel or anything, but uh I'm yeah. Check that out. Yeah. Definitely going to check that out. Uh actually myself and a group of friends, we did our uh we put out our own indie horror comedy last year. It's called uh, Retro Freaks. I see. Um, but yeah, right that was, it was a lot of fun. Um, and we, so it's uh, so it's what? Uh, so it's it, um, it's it all takes place in a movie theater. No, uh, so <laughs> so so uh, Kevin Smith actually invited us to play our movie from uh, at his Mod Castle Cinema in Jersey. Uh -huh. uh, so this is just that movie poster from that got event. It. I got it. But uh -huh. uh, the movie's about um, it's a bunch. So my YouTube channel, uh, I'm like. I go out and toy hunt, right? That's my whole thing. Go out, find good deals, travel all around. Um, so it's when this director that's local, he's into pop culture, and he was like, uh, he watched the channel, and he was like, "Hey, I got a really good idea for a for a horror comedy. Like, are you down?" I was like, "Sure. Like, why not? Let's 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 try it out." So basically, the movie is uh, it's based around toy collectors that um we have demon princess acula that um intertwines and um all hell breaks loose all hell breaks loose in oh, local toy stores and um yeah it's i you know i don't want to say too much more but it, it was a lot of fun it was a lot uh, of work where where is it viewable um so we we have it up on we have copies that we sell at you know like toy shows and stuff but also we are trying to get it on uh prime video right now oh, yeah. mm -hmm. so but i have a copy right i'll copy i'll send i'll send it to you all right on. Um, like if you ever it. want to check it out if nice. i do i do but I, I, my, my look my whole record collection is mm -hmm. bands no one's ever heard of i like mm -hmm. I, I you know mostly what in upended commas the man feeds us you know, it's fine. But mm -hmm. again, you know, I was talking about the, the turtle cartoon earlier. You mm -hmm. know, they sanded all the edges off. And yeah. this is what, and, and it's a good cartoon. You know, I mean, I'm not yeah. slamming it. But they, they, they did, you know, remove a lot of the elements of danger. Yeah. And this is what they really, this is because you don't want to chase anybody out of the theater. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, most larger corporations are, are, are trying to make it so more people are coming in. You know, we yeah. were talking about we were talking about Tom Six before, mm -hmm. you know, uh, before going on the air here, who mm -hmm. was the director of the Human Centipede films. Uh, uh, like he intentionally is making art 
I I have a podcast of my own called The Spoon. The Spoon. And okay. yeah, the uh, thespoonradio.com. There you gotcha. go. You go there. Oh, and so I, I have two uh it's two friends, you know, uh that I, that host it with me. And one of them uh, refers to something he calls video rodeo, which is you're watching a movie and you have the remote in your hand or you're in the theater and you're like, all right, I'm going to turn this off. Uh, not yet, though. Uh, I'm, I'm going to turn that. Uh, uh, so, like, for me, video rodeo is just as much about entertainment as yeah. sitting all the way through the end credits and going, yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's fine. It's you know, fine. I'd rather watch something where I'm like, what on earth just <laughs> happened to me? Uh, that's that's what yeah, I want I just, out of my art. Yeah. I, out of my art, I want I want profundity, whatever mm -hmm. it is. So if I'm going to see a tragic love story, mm -hmm. I want to walk out of there going, oh, my God, it was over. And then they, they're gone. Ah, you know. Yeah. I want that. And I, you know. I mean, uh, I don't know when that first Matrix movie came out. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I was, and it does, uh, well, here's the thing. It doesn't take much, apparently. Because mm -hmm. I walked out of the theater going, well, the novel idea done very well. Yeah. And how the hell did they get that made? Yeah. I mean, because the concept is so, is such a hard sell. Yeah, it, it is. is. It's a fake world that everybody lives in. Mm -hmm. but, you know, so... Yeah, so it, it can be done, but I, you know, most of the things that I think, you know, records, all that stuff, mm -hmm. most of that stuff that I, most of the records I own are indies, most of the shows that I like, you know, I'm a big YouTube watcher, you know, I was, I was, I was on board with Cobra Kai right off the top. Come on, same here, dude. So, yeah, I, um, I, I was at a con in Kentucky and it's, it was uh, right when Cobra Kai season one came out, right? Like I think maybe a week or two in, and of course they had they had uh, um, Martin there, they had uh, freaking Larusso, um, Ralph yeah, Macho, yeah. and they and so. they they had uh, Zapka there, yeah. and I was like, oh, after starting to watch Cobra Kai, like the first few like like episodes, I was like, oh freaking johnny's the dude man and his line there was no freaking line at all um ralph's it was wrapped and mm -hmm. so i got to walk straight up to uh william zapka and i was like dude a freaking you know love cobra kai i love karate kid yada 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 and now like i went to a con this past year his his lines you can't even you can't even hardly get in like he, mm -hmm. he can't be there that long because uh you sit in for hours and hours and there's just too many people. So it, that was wild to like watch that yeah. roll out. It was, you know, so yeah. So I like, you know, usually, uh, mm -hmm. that's another thing we talked about a lot on the spoon is, uh, after anything, I, anything I like gets really successful. Mm -hmm. I kind of stop paying attention to it because I had this thing of like, well, what do you need me for? Mm hmm. They don't need me anymore. You can, you have your fans now. You go go do your little <laughs> go do your little career thing. I'll go find something else that needs me. Yeah. Um, so uh, I know the story, but can you tell uh, the viewers like how did you get involved with Chartnado and like what what did you do for Chartnado and like you know, I know you play. Yeah, I mean, okay. So a a Anthony for Anthony C. Ferrante and I are Quint. Well, it's the group that makes all these songs for these movies. Mm -hmm. And I've known Anthony uh, since he was a film student. He's wow. about, you know, he's like 10 years younger than me. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, uh, I, so I met him when he was a, a just a youngster, really, barely out of high school. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he was making things already. And he kept asking me to you know, either be in them or do music for them or whatever. Mm -hmm. And this turned into a, a thing that we started. So he did a, his first, his first movie, movie, his first, you know, uh, feature length movie. 
was this thing called Boo. And uh, so we wrote a bunch of songs for that. And that, uh, you know, it was a low budget movie, just you know, kind of came and went. And then uh, he started doing these asylum movies. And as he started doing those, I'm, you know, right alongside, you know, he's like, whatever, you know, can't get Aerosmith, get rock. Yeah. Um, and uh, and I, I don't look like Aerosmith either. Which is, <laughs> it's been a big stumbling block for me. So, uh, so yeah. He's so he's calling me on these things. So we were working on, uh, so we have songs in that movie. We have songs in something called Headless Horseman. Mm -hmm. We have uh, we have uh, songs in uh, so the asylum. You know they do what they call mockbusters, mm -hmm. which are low budget versions of of big budget movies that are out there in the world. So when mm -hmm. Battleship came out, oh, yeah they did American battleships, yeah. uh, you know, so there's a, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. So there was a, uh, a Hansel and Gretel that we were working on and okay. the week before we were doing some songs for that thing. And the week before I had gone to a, uh, you know, like a mini con, like in Santa Monica, it's called the American film market. And, you know, I was there, I think trying to sell, uh, stump the band. And I passed by the asylum booth, mm -hmm. and uh, they had the Sharknado poster. It said Sharknado, Nuff said, yeah. and and you know uh, when Christopher Guest uh, pokes his head into the flower shop and little shop of horrors and mm -hmm. says, "Excuse me, I couldn't help but notice that yeah. new and exciting plant." Well, I basically did that with Sharknado. I peeked my head into the office and said, "Excuse me." are you guys making a movie about tornadoes with sharks in them? And they're like, and they looked a little like, yeah, we are. And I was like, that's amazing <laughs> because I'm a genre nut. Mm -hmm. I like, and I love nature run amok movies, mm -hmm. anything, giant spiders, whatever, you know, yeah. crazy. Well, yeah, whatever. I, I like these sort of small genre pictures, you know, like, mm -hmm. uh, like, it's a big movie with a huge budget, but Independence Day is is a low budget B movie mm -hmm. yeah. with 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 tons of cash behind it. Yeah, but yeah. that movie would have been awesome mm -hmm. if it was made for a nine hundred thousand dollars. It just all the yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's a really cool, crazy idea that, uh, that. And so I love these kind of things. Mm -hmm. And so the nine year old boy in me mm -hmm. squealed like a little girl when he saw that poster. Yeah. So uh, I'm uh, at the studio uh, working with Anthony on these on the songs for the Hansel and Gretel movie, and uh, he goes, you know, we're during a break, and he goes, yeah, I, you know, I don't know if I'm going to take it, but yeah, the Asylum offered me this Sharknado movie, and I was like, I was engineering, so I'm you know tippity tapping at my computer there, mm -hmm. and uh, I stopped, I looked up, and I went Sharknado, what? <laughs> and I I jumped out of my chair. Uh, this is and now Anthony's not uh, as, shall we say, gregarious as I am. I'm, mm. you know, every gesture with me is a massive one. So up out of my chair, I go, what? And I <laughs> grab him by the lapels. And he looks at my hands and he looks me in the eye, not sure what's going to happen next. Mm. And I said, look, I don't know why but I really think you should direct this movie. And if you do, you have to put me in it. <laughs> Bless so, <you. laughs> so, uh, uh, and after I said that, he looked at me and said, can I have my shirt back, please? <laughs> I went, oh, Jesus, Anthony, sorry. God, get sorry. Whatever. he goes, now, I don't know. He really he didn't that wasn't what made him make the decision to make Sharknado. Mm -hmm. But I will say I was right. Because I, I I knew I something about this thing. I knew it was so so the fuck is happening here yeah. that there's no way that it couldn't have been it couldn't have been uh, at least interesting. Oh, so dude. yeah. yeah. That was a thing, man. Like I remember, oh, then it broke the internet. Then yeah, it broke yeah. The Twitter. yeah, yeah. I remember because I it, it, didn't it debut on Sci Fi Channel. It was like yeah. a build up for that. Like I remember waiting weeks to like watch this. I was like, 
this yeah. looks so terrible that oh, I, I'm going to love it. I'm going to love I it. Mean, look, I mean, did. He made a $200 million movie mm-hmm. for just shy of a million dollars. Um, one of the things that I hope the industry will wake up to mm-hmm. is that Anthony C. Ferrante is a wizard. And I, and I, I quite literally mean that he's a cinematic wizard. I, he, uh, with a budget behind him mm-hmm. and it's starting to happen. He has a, a thing on Tubi called uh, Butch Cassidy. Oh, Butch, Butch Cassidy. Cassidy movie. Yeah. Okay. It's on Tubi right now. Tubi. And uh, it's a little bit more money they spent than they did on Sharknado, and mm-hmm. it, and you know the budget is up there and stuff. But mm-hmm. Anthony makes things happen out of uh, out of the most awful of situations. Yeah. Uh, the asylum has, because of their budgetary restraints, I feel as though they could have more respect for Anthony's skill. Mm-hmm. Um, but what they did, at least on these Sharknado movies, it may be changing now, but on the Sharknado movies, you know, they would start with a 19-day shooting schedule, and then five days in, they're like, we're knocking three days off of this. And he's like, shit, I gotta That's get my crazy. movie down. So on two, he was losing days. Mm-hmm. So he he mapped out and shot an entire action sequence in 15 minutes in the time that it took the ferry to go from the Statue of Liberty back to the dock. That's conceived of. He was run. He had no time and he said, I need a scene. So he conceived of it and shot it with the actors, just, you know, the actors had been shot at the Statue of Liberty and they had, yeah. You know, they were on the boat. And so they he, he winged. And if, if more people understood what, right, so Anthony, you... what Anthony could do with no yeah. money, what what the man could do with a major budget mm-hmm. would be... I mean, and I look, I've known the guy for a decade, so I'm mm-hmm. going to say that. Yeah, But yeah. I've also seen him work up work. Work. And uh, when the industry hopefully someday wakes up to that fact, Mm-hmm. Uh, his name, I believe his name will end up up there with, you know, the, the real people the real people. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> the real people. That's, yeah. that's the thing. like an action shooting an action sequence in 15 minutes. Oh, it's unbelievable. I, I mean, that's unheard of. I mean, like, yeah. I, I can't, I can't even imagine. I mean, we, I've only done this one thing uh-huh. and I, I, I can't. It's in, <laughs> it's in two. It's in two. And it's yeah. on the ferry going for it. And even the shot, the scene mm-hmm. is going from the ferry to the dock. That's crazy. And man. they were just, they was like, look, I have 50, I got to get this done. And he, you know, so the guy's a wizard and uh, mm-hmm. I think he deserves, he deserves a lot more than, uh, you know, I mean, he's got a name and he's doing yeah. some stuff, but I, 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 I think he's still an undiscovered, uh, an undiscovered yeah. entity. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Holy yeah. crap, dude. So, um, so I, are you doing the music for the new Sharknado or the, the one that's... Well, the one that's in theaters is that uh, is yeah. now is the first one. So we, we, that. There's a guy here in St. Petersburg named Brian Merrill. We, uh, we, him and I remixed the whole thing. Okay. All, all the songs anyway. And yeah. then they did a... They did, it's got, I guess it's got a 4K uh, print that they've done now. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, they've really beefed it up. He's, uh, you know, he's re edited some scenes. You know, I'm still in it. So, you know. The bus driver, man. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, uh, this is another thing, of course, I love uh, talk, I love working with Anthony is that I, I got the script pages and okay. he's like, if you can think of anything better, then go ahead. So, pretty much all of my dialogue is just, I'm, um, you know, just being winging it. It's hilarious. Yeah, he's winging it. Yeah. Yeah. And That's but that also means my mom. My mom always said Hollywood would kill me. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. yeah. Yep. <laughs> there's 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 truth in it. Yeah, there it is, man. Robbie Celebration is coming to uh, Plano, Tex- Allen, Texas, September sixteenth mm-hmm. and seventeenth. This is the second Celebration. 
Is that correct? Second, number two? I'll, two? I'll say yes. You'll say yes. Okay, sounds good. I, th I think you're right. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, what do you What do you look forward to the most? Um, seeing what how how the first one did, uh, the res kind of response that uh, you mm -hmm. guys received. Uh, yeah, what do you look good. forward to the most on this uh, second one? Well, I I mean I, uh, the thing is going to be what the thing is mm -hmm. the celebration thing, right? Mm -hmm. This is. It, it's basically a way of kind of just saying, hey, this is this group of people that's associated with this thing. And yeah. so for me, doing the celebration thing, um, it's about, it's what I call closing the circle. Um, basically, you make these things in a vacuum, right? Uh, especially the voiceover part of it, because really just me and a, production manager and you know all of us and we just individually just plow through our lines over a series of days right mm -hmm. so uh so it's uh, and then the thing goes out there into the world mm -hmm. and it and it has its life whatever its life may be and this is an opportunity to talk to and you know meet and talk to the people who have created this phenomenon? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're uh, uh, this doesn't. None of this happens without the people who this has become a part of their lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, hearing again, I never get tired of hearing how, uh, like, there's a. There, there's a woman named Michelle Ivy, arguably the biggest turtle fan on the planet. She uh, she has heads, mm -hmm. she has animatronic heads. Yeah. She's a big fan, right? And she told me uh, I met her at a con in Chicago, and she said uh, when she was younger, she was uh, mercilessly bullied by the kids in the small town that she grew up in, and. Uh, she, you know, went home from school and went to school every day terrified. Mm -hmm. And at a certain point, she sees the first turtle movie. And she walks out and she goes, you know, they can defend themselves. There's no reason why I can't. Okay. This is a movie about guys in rubber suits Mm -hmm. doing gymnastics except for the fact that it's not because through whatever happens in this movie people in the theater people at home on their couch experiencing this thing for some people well I would say for everybody that I've talked to in one way or another, this movie has been very transformative for me. Mm -hmm. And hearing, uh, I mean, there are people that were like, uh, you know, I get a lot of fan art, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I, I, I've always take pictures of it and put it up on my Instagram, you know? Mm -hmm. And so many people are like, Oh no, I started drawing because of the turtle movie. I the, like all of these people uh, have, have, have an amazing story about this thing that I just, you know, I mean, I'm honored to be a part of it. Mostly mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm just as shocked about this as you are, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So uh, for me, that's mm -hmm. for, for me, it's all, it's all about the people, man. So but, but really, but really it is. It's mm -hmm. about it's about it's about the people who this stuff has meaning for. Right. And 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 I sort of see my job mm -hmm. as being sort of a, a goodwill steward mm -hmm. uh, for their nostalgia. Yeah. How's that? Yeah. And uh, and and uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's we become artists to communicate. Mm hmm. Well, here we go. Here we let's are. Com let, let's communicate. That's awesome. Very good answer, dude. Wow. 
Good answer. It's true. It's true. It's true. I wouldn't be, we would not be having this discussion mm -mm. No. if it wasn't for people like Michelle and yep. whoever, all these people that have come and shared their story about the thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's profound. It mm -hmm. really even really though it's guys in rubber suits doing <laughs> with other people doing their voice. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, Ken Scott has a, right. has a has a really good description of how many people it takes mm -hmm. to make a turtle. Mm -hmm. It's like four because there's a stunt turtle. Mm -hmm. There's the there's the puppeteer turtle, mm -hmm. right? And then there's the guy who's doing the animatronics I and, and I think he's the voice. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I think. And then, and, and then, and then we do our voices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On top of that. Yeah. So yeah, it's, uh, there's it's, like, it, it's, it's a quite a pro our art is a crazy, like, you know, when you start, I, whenever I get like DVDs, if they still make those, no, when they, uh, I'm, I go right to the making of, Oh yeah, I go. I go to the making of first. Mm -hmm. You know the little featurette that oh, yeah, talks man. about you know. Especially if you're an, thing. I mean, an, an, an actor or something like that. I mean, that's yeah. Most oh no! If you if how, you have thought about making movies and and haven't yet, mm -hmm. I highly suggest watching the making of the Abyss. The Abyss. It's a, it's okay. a, do, it's a, they made a little documentary and you know, it came with the, with the movie. I'll put right? that on my list for sure. Um, basically the making of the abyss is a study in the universe mm -hmm. asking you how badly really do you want to do this? You just, cause it's a nightmare. It's just the whole thing. You just, you find yourself going, Oh no. And then, <laughs> Oh God. Oh, they almost killed Ed Harris. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. Yeah, I'll definitely check that one out for sure. Do it. Yeah. Um, totally. so, so, yeah, so celebration coming up. We're going to have Robbie that's going to be there. Ken Scott's going to be there. Judith Hogue, Ernie Reyes Jr. Brian Tochi. Brian Tochi. I still the, haven't. The, Brian the still hasn't seen my email yet. Like, I've been waiting uh, to hear from he's, Brian. Uh, Brian has an entire life mm -hmm. that, that he's dead center of right now oh, that is probably oh. eating up a lot of things. That makes total sense then. I'll yeah. see him at the show. I'll get to uh, talk. No, yeah. Brian is Brian is one of my favorite people ever. He's so great. That's well, he's another guy. I've known him since we were kids. That's oh since you were kids. Wow. Yeah, oh. I think I yeah, I was like nine when I met him. Wow. Yeah, I think he was like thirty four or something. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, and he was on an original episode of Star Trek, was he? Okay, yeah, original episode, yeah, him, yeah. I think him and uh, Clint Howard, Clint Howard, are okay. the only ones are, and, and Shatner mm -hmm. are the only ones still alive from Good that girl. original show. That's insane, to think isn't that about. amazing? That's yeah, crazy. that is crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, so. Uh, Okay, so when you're doing a couple more questions, and then we'll do the rapid mm -hmm. round. But um, when when you were doing your your voiceover parts and stuff, did you? I know Corey Feldman; he was the voice of Donnie uh, Donatello. Did did how was y'all's interactions? How was that whole thing? Oh, I, I, Corey's another guy. You know, we've known each other for decades. Forever. So, like, yeah, yeah uh, you know, come on, uh, Corey and I were part of a coterie of uh young you know young performers who uh -huh. when you know when you go to auditions you know your parents are taking you when you're under 18 so we would walk into casting offices it would be Corey, me moosey dryer was one of them there was a few of us mm -hmm. and we would walk in and the parents would all glare at us because they realized if Corey feldman walked in the building their hey, kid wasn't getting the job. <laughs> Sorry, let's go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, I, you know, Corey is, I, I, I got to give it up for the guy. Corey is, a, he's a hes a pure artist. Mm -hmm. He And I really admire this about, about him. He does things because he enjoys them. 
Yeah. And and you can, there are people on both sides of this fence where they're like, oh my Lord, what is that guy doing? Mm -hmm. And then I'm on the other side where I'm like, he's expressing himself. He's being, he's being he doesn't, he yeah. doesn't want to sell records. Mm -hmm. He wants to show you his art. And I think that's incredibly well refreshing yeah, and, sure. and very brave. Mm -hmm. And, very and for me, a, a, probably the best reason to go into art is yeah. to not care what people think and just go, yeah, this fell out of my head. There you go. Here it is. Yeah. 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 That's, that's that. Uh, I agree. hundred percent. Yeah. That's yeah. Uh, and he's a really good guy. I like there you him. go. There you go for yeah. sure. We are now at our rapid fire round. So I'm oh, going ask Robbie. I got about six or seven questions. Robbie, the first thing that comes to mind when I or when I ask your question, the first thing, shoot it out. We're going to go to the next one and uh, we'll see. We'll have a little fun with this, see what happens. All right. Are you ready? Peaches. Oh, I'm sorry. That wasn't a question. All right. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, question one, Goonies or Monster Squad? Uh, which Monster Squad? Uh, uh, are we talking about the movie? The movie. Or are we talking movie. about the television series the television with Fred series. Grandy? No. Well, then, then Goonies. Fuck the Monster Squad. Oh, ouch. Yeah. Harsh. Okay. Oh, I'm digging deep now, man. That's it. <laughs> Monster Squad. Oh, Monster Squad can suck it. <laughs> Goonies for fuck's sake. Come All on. Right. This is my wish. This is my wish. Um, how many times did you say the word damn in the first Team and Team movie? Uh, once or twice, tops. Okay. Okay. It was once. once. Yeah, there you go. The, the, the damn rabbit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hit the damn rabbit. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's Ninja uh, Kick the Damn Rabbit. Ninja Kick right. the Damn Rabbit. You know, you haven't even seen the movie. What do you know? You, know I, seen? you I, just I, gave it away. You I'm just gave it away that you're a here. turtle. You're a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fan wannabe. Fan. I just oh, really yeah. like them, man. Um, who were you like closest to on, on, on the set? Like, uh, let's say, let's use the movie one. Oh, I mean, again, uh, there, we, I was never on the set. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, right. yeah, we were doing, we were, we came in, right. you know, in when the movie was basically movie. done. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. Uh, so the yeah, the movie's basically done, and we you know we come in and do our part. So mm -hmm. I mean, I again, I knew Brian mm -hmm. uh, and had it forever, and both. Brian and Corey, I've been, mm -hmm. been known these guys forever, yeah. you know. And also, I've noticed in voiceover world, mm -hmm. there tends to be less ego. There tends to be less fighting and that kind of thing because you're not on camera. They're like, who cares? You just sort of go and say your words and go home. Yeah. So, uh, so the voiceover people in general, everybody mm -hmm. tends to really get along. That's awesome. Yeah. That's very cool. Do you like pizza? Do you actually like Yeah, what do you cheese? Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It's a cheese sandwich. It is. Pizza's yeah. basically a cheese sandwich. Mm -hmm. And under what circumstances is a cheese sandwich bad? Unless you have a a a, a, a lactose intolerance issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um or or yeah. uh or high blood pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but other than that, it's a cheese, it's like Pizza's like sex. It yeah. is because even when it's not very good, it's still pizza and still pizza. sex. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it goes hand in hand. Yeah, I, I yeah. like that. I like that how you connected the two. Makes sense. Yeah. Perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, if you were if you were approached to to collaborate with another uh, Team and T project, um, would you? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. I is wish they. I wish they. I wanted to be in the Seth Rogen one. I, I don't know how Feldman does it. He somehow got into one of the Michael Bay ones. Either there is a voice or a something. A voice, probably. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, hey, but of course, you know, I insulted the director. So right, you know, right. I get those. Producers. But I mean, now this, you know, Seth Rogen's world. You know, yeah, that's now. right. That's right. Call me in. I, no, yeah. look, I want, and also, I want to work. I don't yeah. like. I look. It just put me in, coach. 
if you put a bat in my hand, I'll hit something. You're ready to play today, man. Like, yeah, get, yeah. Let's get it. Um, I do believe they're talking about doing like a spinoff, like TV series from this newer movie. So maybe. Well, I, it's a crazy thing about this property is that they keep finding ways to reinvent it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, 2012, that thing ran for five years, didn't yeah. it? It was yeah. really, it was really, that was a really solid series. I like the, yeah. the storytelling and everything about it. It looked great, sounded great. Mm -hmm. I mean, they did a fantastic job with that series. Um, okay, well, that's all that I have uh, for you, Robbie. That's it. So make sure you uh, join Robbie at Celebration. Yes. September 16th and 17th, Allen, Texas. Mm -hmm. Uh, Retro Expo, check mm -hmm. it, be there, be square. Yeah, yeah. there. okay, and there's a RobbieRisk.net. There is a RobbieRisk Bandcamp. There is a RobbieRisk Facebook. There is a RobbieRisk Instagram. There is a RobbieRisk, one of your fingers. What is that? What is that? It's all going to be down below. I got you, honey. Oh, they're all down below. You. There you go. Yeah, all of it. I'm sprinkling yeah. it all so, uh, so that, 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 I think that's all. Oh, the spoon. The spoon yeah, the spoon. Uh, uh, also, uh, uh, stumptheband.com. Okay. Uh, the trailer I think is up on YouTube. Okay. You know, I'm going to put thing. all of that down so everybody can check that out. Uh, Sign of the devil. Rob, dude, like this was by far the funnest interview I've ever done. So, <laughs> thank you. Well, you're you're, you're a blast, dude. <laughs> good. Uh, it's way better than like, uh, yes. Yes. Maybe. No. Maybe. It was okay. All right. Yeah. I kind of dug it. Maybe it didn't. I don't know. <laughs> All, All right, right, man. We'll see y'all. Have a good one.